Hi friends, my name is Andrea. I'm an artist in residence through the Levine Cancer Institute in Concord. I hope I'm finding you and your family safe and well during this time. I wanna take a moment to demonstrate just a few artistic techniques and hope that you feel encouraged to join along and just find a moment of joy and solace in the creative process. Okay, we'll be taking the aerial view of the turtle so that you're looking at the, the back shell of it, predominantly of the sea turtle. So um, to start, I just have a piece of paper and a pencil. I can place this wherever I want, but I do wanna make sure I'm not doing the first part, which will be the shell, the basic shape, too large and, and feeling crowded when it comes to the fins and the head and the tail. So I do wanna keep that in mind. If I know I'm going to be using this later for say a composition and I'm gonna add paint to it, I do wanna consider that placement. I don't wanna be so stuck to it being dead center, but maybe off to a corner looking like it's swimming up and, and into a current versus its nose being directly on the edge of it. So for that reason alone, I'm gonna have it kind of facing up in this direction too. So I'm just gonna start simple, simple shapes, and then from those simple shapes, we'll come in better detail. So I'm gonna start with just a basic oval. Again, this is just a basic sketch of a sea turtle. This is going to serve as our shell. Now you'll see me go around several times. I'm very light and loose with the pencil. I'm not gonna sit here and expect to draw a perfect one right off the bat. There's certainly um, some combinations of lines here that could certainly make the, the shape that I'm looking for. Maybe I want it to draw out a little bit more in one area, but you'll notice how whatever I do then on the left, I'll do on the right and vice versa. And then I'll just kind of clean it up. I'm not gonna clean it up too much knowing that I will do more of that towards the end. And then they do tend to have a little bit of a movement in the shell down in this corner that um, leads to the tail, but I wanna be careful not to do too much of that until I get this approximate line of symmetry. So with that, I'm just gonna draw a line that's gonna help me help sort of establish what's the left and what's the right and then just sort of break it down so it just doesn't seem near as overwhelming. Again, it's approximate. If you really want to use a ruler, you may use a ruler, but this is just going to help break things down one more step. So from that, I can then sort of say, okay, well, I know that shell has a little bit of a tip that comes in there. You notice how light I am with my pencil. So that way I don't feel like it's going to be so stuck to it later. And I'm going to use this also, notice how it comes outside of the shell. I'm going to use this to help with the head. It's going to help break that down to a half and half. Uh, the heads in general are, are so much smaller in comparison to the shell. So I want to make sure I'm not going too big in this case. But I might even just start here at the tip. I almost think about maybe like a heart shape without seeing the bumps. Like this is the bottom of a heart. This is where the eyes would be. You know, they could tuck in just a little bit more. I'm not gonna look for perfect symmetry here. If one side's a little bigger, maybe he or she is looking one direction or the other. And then I do wanna take the time to sort of round out the nose because they're not too pointed there. Again, you'll see I've left a lot of those sketchier lines out there. Then I'm gonna jump into my fins. And at that front, these front flippers are um, so important for them to pull that water back towards them that they need to be a little bit closer to the front rather than down here at the middle. So I wanna give myself, just sort of estimate off the head here and think again, basic shape. I'm gonna think maybe more triangular first so it kind of bends up here towards the head and maybe comes back. These are a good size. And it might get a little thinner here almost looks like a little bit of a combination of, of triangles, more like a boomerang kind of shape, okay? I'm not loving that. I'll make some adjustments to it here. I feel like I want this to come out a little bit more, a little softer. But again, see how I've left those original guidelines I did. I have to make a judgment call. If I say I don't like it, we'll leave that item there to make that call. And I just want it to be a little softer, a little wider this part. So I feel pretty good about that and I want to use this general estimate here. This is about how far out I want to start this slipper and that does not mean it needs to mimic. It does not have to take the straight, same straight angle but utilize this what we call a negative space to kind of help with that. Um, one might be pushing water and one might be turning so you might see a little oblong um, less 
symmetrical transition there and that's fine. So I might tuck this one back a little bit more. And now that I felt more comfortable with the shape of that, this one will um, take shape just a little bit faster. What's interesting is you'll find when you do this um, symmetrical drawing, you'll find that one side of the paper is a little easier to draw on than the other with your left hand versus right handed. It's just kind of an interesting um, comfort. So obviously for purposes of this video, I'm not shifting it around, but if I were you, I would certainly make this more comfortable and twist it and turn it to make that feel more comfortable. Then you've got your back flippers and fins coming off this direction towards that bottom. And so same thing, I wanna work on one side and then I'll, I'll do my back side, or excuse me, other side. And those also kinda of have a triangular movement, but they're not near as big as the front. They're really more solid. So I almost take a part of a trapezoid into it. So again, they're very angular at first, knowing later that I will curve those around. So I might take my pencil and curve that. And then I might start to go into a little bit of bumps and little details, something that makes this look less geometric and more organic. I'll work off and add a little bit more detail in that case. Start to erase out some of these lines. So you'll see the more confident I get and how I want that shape to look and those lines to be, I'll start to erase out, but more so, I'll start to press a little harder in that so I really know what I'm working with here. And so, this really starts to take shape. I'm gonna go through and do that harder pencil just to say, yep, this is, this is what I'm working with here. This is what I know I'm doing and sticking with. And then I'm gonna jump into the shell. So I feel pretty good about the shape of the body. Of course, I could always tweak it. I could um, adjust the, the fins, flippers, everything, you name it, um, or I can come back to that later. But we are getting more into the detail of it, so I would suggest um, feel confident and ready for that. Don't overplay, though, of course, the body. I will, right before that, excuse me, I'm gonna put a little triangular tail, that one. We'll just use that line of symmetry to help with that, too. Okay, now I'm gonna use this line of symmetry yet again. I'm going to work in the back sections, which are gonna be hexagon shapes. These beautiful, strong, strong shapes that are gonna stack on top of each other. And then you'll see from those shapes, we're gonna pull off into, some still have some geometric tendencies, but they might look more like a pentagon, some like hexagons. They're just gonna go over the contour of that shell. So usually I try to put about three solid ones down the middle. And so in your drawing of hexagons, I'm going to do a fairly decent sized equal sign. And hexagons can get a little overwhelming for people, but just keep in mind the size of this line, hexagons have six sides. So this line then has to be the same length for this part, this part, this part, this part, where I see some get frustrated as they'll make this line extremely long and then you're very much trying to jam in some shorter lines. So maybe start smaller in this case. You'll see me make some adjustments too. So I'll start with that one for that shape, but I'm gonna go ahead and put about a similar size area from here to here, here to here. And this is going to be my, uh, I like to call them my equal signs. So you're gonna have these two sets of equal signs rather, and then you're gonna fill in three hexagons in between it. So from that point, I then draw a triangular corner off of here. And again, the, this length of this line is gonna be very similar to the length of that line. So see me, again, not overwork it. It's interesting, this is a very geometric shape, but it's on the curve and contour of an organic object, which is very freeform at the same time. So don't beat yourself up if you're saying it's not a perfect hexagon. It's near impossible to do it perfect. Okay, if I feel good about that, then I'll carry on from there. The big thing now is, do I feel like that's a good size and scale for the size of what this, this guy is? Because really I'm just gonna be able to fit in a few more um, shapes from that point. I feel pretty good about them, but truthfully, I would like to make them a little bigger. So I'm gonna start those lines over. And I like to leave a little bit of those lines apparent that I started with so I really know, okay, am I really making those bigger? And 
then I might put my first one in here just to give myself a good visual. So you could always do the first one and then work the other two off of it. Again, still using this line of symmetry for some guidance here. And they're just gonna stack on top of each other just like so. Again, my lines are pretty loose. And I feel pretty good about that. So before I start to pull off these kind of spider web lines, one decorative element that these shells have is they have this outer ring where it kind of flattens out some. So I'm more or less just drawing from copying and mimicking a smaller line from the inside of it. Just give it a little bit of smaller space within the middle there and now you'll see this outer ring and then from this I'm just going to utilize these corners I'm going to pull these off but you almost have to think about them as if they're like the hands of a clock so I don't want this to flatten out I need this to also kind of come out towards the closest portion of that shell so very lightly anything that has a corner that's moving out so you'll see this this again see how it radiates out of it and when I say the outer corner, I'm more so meaning see how these are indented in. I'm not gonna pull a line from there. There's already a line here. I'm not gonna pull another line there. These are the shapes I'm working with. Now, that still looks a little bit more um, sketch oriented, not as realistic. Again, we're not going for realistic perfection, but the most interesting part and the thing that's super crucial to this part, even before we add in other details, is that we're closing these off to look like an actual shape not to truly be a line drawing. So this is what I would call a line drawing. And it sounds wild, but you'll, I think you'll see where I'm going with this. So then just for my, my guidelines, I like to leave a little bit of space in between it. The, sh the shells truly do have a, an area in between them, and that's the line that you see. Now let's make this a shape. So I'm gonna work within this. Again, letting myself be a little more free f wiggly with it. Free form, little wiggly. But see how I've now made this about the shape, not about the line. So I'll do the same thing in like these hexagons. You can go in any order, but I'm kind of just chiseling off the corners of these. I'm using those guy, those lines as a guideline, not as the end all be all. So you'll see and I'm even gonna put a little wobble in here. They need to have some organic flow in here. See the difference between, say, this section and this section. So not only am I leaving some space in between it, but I can truly say this is about the shape. This is about the line. So I will continue to do this through there. kind of reasoning in this outer ring here there's even some breakup in those shapes and spaces and um, not necessarily working directly from these lines I don't want that to be the breakup but rather a little bit more random so I'll start off with the idea of the line drawing but I'll kind of do it symmetrically so maybe I'll do a line here a line here and just kind of work this around like it's a Again, I keep saying radial design. Everything's spawning basically from this hexagon in here. And you'll see me continue that radiating line. But now, just like the shell, I don't want to make this, the inner part of the shell, I don't want to make this about the line, but I want to make it about the shape that's within this. So I will go in and now break these up. It's going to add a nice little additional wobble to that shell and just make it so much more believable. So I'll continue that around that side then. Now 
I feel good about that pop of that shell. I feel like that really does justice to the shapes within it, not just the, um, the lines within it too. And now the turtles just really have this um, beautiful lines, line work moving around also throughout their flippers and their fins, um, predominantly kind of working off the bottom. What, what can be tricky about this part is it's really hard to visualize where that starting point is. Whereas we could say, okay, I can really work off of this middle hexagon and see how everything can spawn off that. In this case, they're just so much more organic and free flowing and I wouldn't really overthink it. In fact, you might even just wanna limit and say, I'm not going to um, cover it completely. Maybe it'll be a little bit more uh, about the shell than about the flippers and fins. But just for, in the case that you do wanna cover it, think about kind of like shapes of a giraffe. So same ideas for the shell. We'll kind of work this idea. Notice how I'm doing these kind of wide wobbly lines off the bottom of these flippers and fins. We'll work lines and then make it about the shape later. So they're kind of stacking off of each other in that case. And then they just start filling in with other shapes, almost triangular, um, some very trapezoidal, but I, I'm more concerned and, and the focus, I really want to be more so on the um, shell. I don't all of a sudden want all this line work in here to kind of take that over. So when I have those broken up and I feel good about the shapes of that or the line work of that, that's when I'll go back in and say, okay, well, I'm just going to make it about the shapes, not about the lines and the lines will be the spaces in between it. So we can come up here. So we're gonna kind of take the edge off of those a little bit. So that will continue. I'm gonna utilize the same aspect in the head, but in this case, I might start more so with a just kind of funky hexagon or trapezoid in that case, and bring some corners off of that, some other interesting shapes. Here they kind of get into like the wrinkly neck area. So I'm not gonna bring it back, it almost sort of fades. But right now that looks very, very geometric. And now I'll make it about the shape. So now we really get to just sort of the fine tuning and really pushing what you want to be the focal point and softening up what you think doesn't need that much attention for the overall appearance. And that's really important in whatever art you're doing, whether it's a sketch or whether it is something a little bit more finalized is to have something with just a little bit more focus and to truly be that attention getting thing. But let another area have softer lines. And it might be an area that you're just not as interested in drawing anyway. So I think because of purpose of this, we can't get away from the shell being so, so important because it's an aerial view. It'd be another thing if we had a frontal view of the turtle with the face coming up towards you then those front flippers and that nose and those eyes those are going to be much more important so I'm gonna leave these nice and dark and you'll see me even kind of loosely go back into this I might play up a little bit more texture in this case because they have just these incredible things growing on them these textures and dings I mean this is a hard shell that has taken quite a beating so you'll see me very loosely now because I don't want it to be about the, um, the same darkness as what the other things are, but maybe I'll just kind of re-emphasize that shape and follow like the contour around, but you see how much lighter the pressure is in my pencil. And I'm picking it up lighter in some cases, but for the most part, my pencil almost stays touching the paper. 
a majority of the time. So because I'm now making this as such a sketchy quality, it gives me kind of the freedom of not being worried about all these kind of dirty lines as you would put it, things that were just simple guidelines before. I don't have to go back in and erase out completely because they're now being hidden in the sketch. That'd be one thing if you have a super dark approximate line of symmetry, I would get that out of there, especially up here in the head, but I'll mess with that in a minute. For the most part, you can't see mine. I'm hid hiding it within the sketch. So do that then before you would start adding in these sketchier qualities. Now on these, same thing, I'll just add in some loose, maybe they're a little more squiggly, something to emphasize the length of these. And you'll notice even on these back flippers, I was really kind of loose about this. I wanted them to imply more movement than I did it being such a stark, here's a flat, quick image. They're moving, they're gracefully floating through this water. And I'm thinking the same thing for these front fins. I want to loosen these and lighten these. I just don't love how dark and how much attention those get. But I do like the strength of this front line, so I might really emphasize that. Add a little bit more um, power to my pencil in that case. Give it a little bit more oomph there. Same thing for the nose of it. I'm going to lighten these up a little so they're still there, but they're softer. If I knew that from the beginning, of course, I could just start softer and then go back and darker, which is easier, but sometimes you just don't know until you get it down. And for sake of demonstrating, I wanted to kind of show you those things. So I'm loosening those up. Maybe think softer length to it and you would have some eyes kind of coming in here so it'd be in this area so I might just darken it there's not a whole lot you can see with that now of course if I were doing another medium on this um, I want to lend myself to that so just for a general sketch this is all I'm demonstrating is you know heavier handed pencil versus a lighter handed pencil going back and erasing if I were say doing this in acrylic paint though but I really feel like I wanted to sketch it out first um, then certainly just be much lighter handed about this because you'll want the paint later to define it and not so much the pencil. But if you'll stay tuned, I'll be doing another video um, of using a watercolor resist. We'll be using some uh, crayon and also some watercolor to really look like this turtle is submerged in the water and part of that environment versus just kind of stuck there on the paper. So have fun. Um, make this more about doodling and learning from it. Don't be afraid to put your pencil to paper and let your mind learn from there and just let your heart wander for a while and um, I think you'll find just some some beauty in what you learn from this experience but also how you can apply it to some of your other drawings. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much.